We believe that Erdogan's decision to go into uh, Syria puts our allies at risk. We believe that the rise of ISIS is imminent if this continues. So to the average American, what does this matter to you? I think it matters a lot that ISIS cannot reemerge. The caliphate's destroyed, but they're alive and well in terms of a ground component, 15 to 20,000 fighters. And without the Kurds, they're going to come back. And if we abandon the Kurds, good luck to get anybody to help you in the future. And that we will fight to make sure ISIS does not get more oxygen uh, and come back. Uh, they have been down, but they are not out. And this action that's been taken uh, gives them an opportunity to come back, and we cannot allow that to happen. Uh, that is the result of the decisions that have been made in the Turkish aggression. Uh, I just want to hold up uh, a headline that tells you what the, the problem is uh, here. Uh, it's right here. Turkish-backed forces are freeing Islamic State prisoners. Turkish-backed forces are freeing Islamic State prisoners. Since 2014, a lot has been happening in the Middle East, not the least Syria and Iraq. With the advancement of the Islamic State, many rumors have been circulating, one of them being about the political stand that Turkey has with the Islamic State. Now, in this video, we're going to look at all facts available from the beginning to present day to finally check if Turkey is supporting ISIS or not. On the top right corner of the screen, you will see a number which represents how many sources we've been going through. Remember that this video is going in a chronological order, so be sure to check to the end of the video as the most conferable hints are being showed in different parts of the video. Don't forget to hit the like button, comment on the video and of course subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any further videos on this channel. Also hit the notification button so that you stay updated whenever we upload a new video. After a long time of research, I've collected a lot of information from reading books and articles on the internet, watching videos and interviews, and finally I feel secure enough to make a conclusion. But first of all, let me present everything to you. First, let's go through some background facts. This is Turkey. Here it lives around 80 million people. About 25 million of them are Kurds. In history, they faced a lot of persecution by the Turkish state. In 1978, PKK was found in Turkish-occupied Kurdistan, and in 1984, a war broke out between Turkey and the PKK, a war which still is ongoing until this present day. With the Syrian civil war, a more unknown organization took control over Kurdish areas in northern Syria. The political name of the organization was PYD, and the military name YPG, and within time, they would come into war with the Islamic State. The area that YPG was controlling made Turkey their neighbor, and Turkey saw that YPG was building their society on the political ideas of Abdullah Öcalan, the leader of PKK. Because of the connection between YPG and PKK, Turkey declared the society of Rojava as their main enemy. Now, my research starts in 2014, during the Islamic State siege of Kobani, a city located on the border between Turkish-occupied Kurdistan and Syrian-occupied Kurdistan. Even though Turkey hadn't involved themselves into the fighting yet, the first accusations of cooperations between Turkey and the Islamic State came from the YPG. At this time, it was only smaller talks between the groups, a rumor which didn't get to any big headlines in media. However, the first time it did was when the Kurdish party HDP accused the Turkish state of cooperation. In a statement to the Telegraph, HDP said, As we've been pointing out for months, this once more proves that Islamic State is being supported from within Turkey. Here is two articles, the first from the Telegraph, where the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights is claiming that the bomber of ISIS came from the Turkish border. In the second article, we have a spokesperson for the YPG claiming the very same thing. Here he says, so far 15 of this group were killed, three of them managed to escape to Turkey. 
there are still some elements hiding inside the city. Note here the part where he says three of them managed to escape to Turkey. According to the journalist Patrick Cockburn, there is strong evidence for a degree of collaboration between the Turkish intelligence service and ISIS, although the exact nature of the relationship remains cloudy. Looking at the conflicts of Kobani, advancing ISIS forces came from all ways, west, south and east. While Kurdish civilians and Kurdish forces were trapped surrounded by ISIS all around them and Turkey in the north, the civilians of Kobani didn't have any other choice but to try flee to Turkey. However, they were denied access. The civilians were now trapped. The question is, would Turkey deny them access if they weren't Kurds? The ironic thing here is that Turkey just stood along the border with its military in a row watching the war between ISIS and the Kurdish troops. If Turkey so much hate terrorism, why didn't they act against both YPG and the Islamic State? Why did they just stand there and watch civilians die and also didn't even take the responsibility to save the civilians by letting them into the country? Now, while YPG were fighting for the people in Kobani, world started to notice that Turkey just stood by there at the border, doing nothing except blocking civilians from safety. But there is actually two questions to ask here. Firstly, is the passivity from Turkey due to the fact that Turkey doesn't like Kurds? Or is it because Turkey supports ISIS? Maybe both reasons. Even though many closed their eyes for the reality here, some still did their job to highlight it. For example, this article from Newsweek, who also wrote about this in 2014, claiming an interview with an ISIS soldier who clearly said that ISIS sees Turkey as its ally. And it didn't stop there, since many Islamic State soldiers has witnessed about the support from Turkey. Even from American official sources, a Turkish ally, an anonymous source, claimed that the rumors now were undeniable. Soon enough, even clear photos and videos were published. International Business Times published these photos in October 2014, showing ISIS fighters chatting peacefully with Turkish soldiers. And I mean, it didn't really help Turkey to deny Kurdish volunteers to fight ISIS from accessing to Syria while hundreds of Islamic State fighters were free to go through the borders. It was almost like Turkey wanted the world to know about their relationship with ISIS. More and more people started to react on these rumors on Twitter and Facebook. Oliver North, an American ex-Marine, were one of those who tweeted about this. He published a picture of terrorists alongside a Turkish soldier and ironically called the meeting too friendly. While the YPG kept on fighting bravely against ISIS in Kobani, ISIS kept on getting casualties and new confirming rumors of wounded ISIS fighters treated in Turkish hospitals were back again. Looking at the sources, the articles are not subjective at all. The sources are different, Russian, American, Israeli, Kurdish, British, exactly sources from everywhere except of Turkish sources. Turkey became known as the gateway of jihad and it was Mail Online which first spread this name, claiming that Turkish border guards were turning a blind eye for as little as 10 US dollars. I ran the ISIS campaign 
40,000 foreign fighters, jihadis from 110 countries around the world, all came into Syria to fight in that war, and they all came through Turkey. The caliphate was on the border of Turkey. We worked with Turkey. I was in Turkey more than any other country to have them seal their border, and they would not do it. They said they couldn't do it, but the minute the Kurds took parts of the border, it's totally sealed with a wall. Turkey reported that between the years of 1957 and 1998, Turkish forces laid 615,419 anti-personnel mines alongside the Syrian border to prevent illegal border crossings. Looking at the recent years, the same mines are killing Kurdish people running from ISIS near Kobani. Turkey are required under the mine ban treaty to destroy all anti-personnel mines, but has missed deadlines several times. This according to Human Rights Watch, who claims that Turkey on purpose didn't remove their mines. The rumors just kept on coming. It was soon exposed how Turkey were buying ISIS oil in the black market. ISIS were under their reign the richest terror organization in the world. Only counting Turkey's help, it is estimated that ISIS got $800 million into their hands. And of course, we all know that large amount of money plays a huge role in what ISIS could achieve or not. Even Iraqi security guards arrested several tanks of oil driven by Turkish drivers and after hearing and interrogations, it was exposed that these trucks were transporting oil from one ISIS controlling city to another, meaning that ISIS used Turkish citizens to more easily transport its oil with false flag. This article from Russian Times tell us about 24 years old Mahmoud Ghazi Tatar, a former Islamic State soldier now captured, telling the Sputnik News about the following. At a training camp in May 2015, our commander told us that the group sells fuel to Turkey. That income covers Islamic State's costs. British media also reported about this. Iraqi Prime Minister Haydel al-Abadi were criticizing Turkey for its ISIS-friendly appearance. Shortly afterwards, Iraqi Prime Minister said, there is no evidence that Turkey wants to fight ISIS. The saying, action speaks louder than words, is a perfect example of what has been going on between Turkey and their supposed offensive against the Islamic State. For years now, that's what Turkish press have been brainwashing their people about and while Erdogan has been telling the world about the Turkish offensive towards the Islamic State, we've only actually seen actions against the Kurdish YPG who've been the strongest force on the ground against the terror organizations, not at least Islamic State in Syria. Leaders and politicians around the world couldn't be quiet anymore. The Israel Defense Minister Moshe Yalon would be the next person to criticize Turkey after Haider al-Abadi. He claims that ISIS has been enjoying Turkish money for oil for a very, very long period of time. Next out was the Russian Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev, who said Turkey's actions are a de facto protection of the Islamic State. There is no doubt about that Erdogan used the war against ISIS as a rhetoric excuse to be able to attack YPG instead. And while Turkey kept on attacking YPG, the Kurdish force at several occasions tried to find peace with the neighboring Turkey. The only demand that the Kurds had was the immediate stop of support to the Islamic State. This publication from 2017 by Ahmed S. Yayla, PhD at George Mason University, is all about ISIS presence in Turkey. The link to this very good publication alongside every other link to all articles in this video will be provided in the description box below. Now, let's take a look at this video who shows how the Islamic State ideology is among the civilians in Turkey. Yakaladığın yerde keseceksin yani. Onları. Ateistler. Allah'a inanmıyorlar. Yani i̇nanmıyorlar Allah'a kitaba inanmıyorlar yani. Hayvan abi onlar insan değil. Nasıl ya? İnsan abi bildiğimiz insan. Nasıl hayvan oluyor? Öyle insan olmaz abi. 
Hani bizim gibi insanlar değil onlar. Onlar hepsinin canı cehenneme. Neden baba? Öyle Allah'a inanmayan yani canı cehenneme. Allah belalarını versin. Yakaladığım yere tek tek onları şiringayla kanalırım onlardan. Nasıl şiringayla kanalırsın yani? Taktım markadan çıkar. <gülüyor> baba. Ya ver şimdi baba baba abi ateş işte. Allah peygamber inanmış. Tamam inanmıyor ama bir şey anlatmaz mıyız ona yani anlatalım. Gidelim İslam'ı anlatalım onu. Abi işte verelim onlar da bu gıtlakla kesinler. İşte canlı böyle. canlı böyle. Ama insan değil mi onlar? İnsan Kasiyan değiller mı? abi. Onlar cahil insanlar. Nasıl yani cahil? Gavurlar. Yani ne bileyim mi baba onlar dümenci insanlar, yalancı insanlar. Nasıl Bizim, yani? Evet ateist ne demek? Şerefsiz bir insandır şimdi yalan söylemeyelim. Neden şerefsiz ki? Çünkü Allah'a inanmayan insan insan değildir. Hayvandır hayvan da olamaz zaten. Hayvan da Allah'a inanan bir insandır. Beyinleri yok yani. Also, do not miss the Huffington Post article, who lists a lot of proofs of why Turkey and ISIS is close allies. Anyway, 17th of October, YPG liberated Raqqa from the Islamic State. Raqqa has been the ISIS capital city and their most symbolic and important city in Syria. Is it just a coincidence that the Turkish threat against Rojava escalated right after the liberation of Raqqa? Suddenly, Turkey started to act more and more and now Erdogan claimed that YPG made a security threat to Turkey's national borders, even though the fact that YPG never had attacked or threatened Turkey. Turkey couldn't either send help to the city of Raqqa since the YPG was in the way. The only thing Turkey could do was to create a new capital city for the Islamic Turkish proxy armies. But to avoid more criticism from the world, Turkey allied themselves with the FSA, Free Syrian Army, and a few months later, Turkey started their operation against the Kurdish city of Afrin in northwestern Rojava. Hundreds of former ISIS members joined the FSA, who already had influences from Al-Qaeda and Al-Nusra. Turkey's plan was to create this new capital city of Turkish proxies, still inside Syria, but at the borders of Turkey, so that they always can send reinforcements there if they would need to. Afrin is simply the new Raqqa, as long as it is controlled by Turkish-backed forces. Turkey was, as mentioned, accused of recruiting ex-ISIS soldiers in their army to fight the YPG. Not long after this, Turkey detained several American and British citizens for fighting against ISIS. Here is another article from the ANF News, where a captured ISIS member exposes the relationship between ISIS and the Islamic State. Further down in this article, one can read that ISIS receives orders from Turkey. He says, they opened the border, allowed our weapons and ammunition through, and facilitated our every need. After we crossed, we were told that we would fight against the Kurds from then on. When we acted in Turkey's name, we faced no obstacles. Nobody once asked us what we were doing or where we were going as we crossed the border time and again. On the contrary, the Turkish state supported us with all kind of weapons and ammunition and other resources. I saw with my own eyes how the Turkish state moved weapons into Girispi region. Here are some interviews with ISIS fighters about their relationship with Turkey. <laughs> بقى حتى البنات من هنا؟ والله الشيوخ هم احنا عناصر والشيوخ هم ياخذوا البنات يعني سبايا يعني واحنا عناصر عند الشيوخ. حاضرين لك قتلت ناس؟ نعم. كم ناس قتلت؟ تسعة. مع السكين مع الاسلاح؟ في هيك في هيك يعني عندك قصاص وفي اعدام ميداني. ليش قتلت هذول الناس؟ لانه كانوا ضدنا. I'm <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> كراد مسيحيه كله انا شوف قدام مقدار اسمه مكبر عليه هذا كافر مو مسلم مسيحي يهودي كله كافر 
تكبير والله بدون ما اقول له انت تسلم ولا شيء ولا نو واحد اجينا الى هنا احنا والشيوخ قالوا هذه المنطقه هذه منطقه الكراد من هنا هاي كلها تكفيري والمنطقه هذه كلها دوله اسلاميه يعني ارض مقدسه اجينا الى هنا قالوا في شيخ كافر مو مسلم واحد سعودي واحد تونسي وركبنا السياره واجينا الى هنا قال يا سلمى عدنان بالمنطقه هنا بالسوري يعني مناطق هنا اجينا لعند الجامع جينا على الطريق كنا واحد مطلوب واخذنا ثلاثه والله اول واحد قصينا راسه ثاني واحد قال يا شيخ انا مسلم وانا اصلي وانا اصوم وانا انا يعني هذيك الساعه التونسي كان يقول هذول كفر ومو اسلام وكشفناه يصلي ويصوم دشرناه يعني يعني كان من تونس صوره غلط يعني شيوخ دشرناه من فين قتلنا واحد هيك حرام ضرب كانوا يشربوا حبوب ويدخل على المعارك. انتوا كنت تاخذوا حبوب؟ كنا ناخذ حبوب يعني. اي شيوخكم كانوا يعطوكم حبوب. ايه كانوا يعطونا حبوب، قالوا مشان ما تخافوا. مشان ما تخافوا ايه قال انت عارف انت تسكر مخك، قال لو تفوت تشرب حبه كبتيكول او زلع تفوت على المعارك ما تحس يعني. يعني ما تحس يعني. مصاري وفلوس. كانوا يعطونا ايه مصاري، يعني كانوا غالينا بالمصاري والسلاح والسيارات وشو ما بدكم نجيب لكم. من وين الفلوس لداعش؟ من السعوديه ومن تركيا كان يجينا من وكل السلاح وكل ال كله كله يجي من الخارج يجينا دعم سلاح وفلوس كل شيء يعني تحبون السعوديه؟ والله نحبهم ليش ما نحبهم؟ تركيا نحبها تركيا ليش ما نحبهم؟ يحبون الحكومه التركيه؟ ما يلزم يبعثون الدكاتره كل شيء وين البنات الكيف؟ الناس بالاول بالشدادي والناس بالموصل كانوا وقتنا هنيك كانوا بالموصل وخذوا الناس على الشدادي وعرقوا كم بنات؟ والله يعني ما يعني نعدوا اكثر. قولي هاي قال اذا كان في واحد يقحد امك ويقحد اختك ويعمل الهاجه انت عملت ليزيديه شو تتفكر؟ بدك هذا بتساوي معه؟ قالوا هذول كفره مو اسلام يعني هيك كانت دون نظر الشيوخ عنهم السعوديين والتونسيين. هذا كله من جانب السعوديين وعندك ما ما عندك موح كانوا يعني يحكوا معك انت مخ يعني هيك يقعدوا معك ساعه ساعتين ذاك ويقنعوك ويقول لك امشي على المعركه يعني تكون انت مالك شغل تقول هذول اسلام يقول لا هذول كفره بدك تقاتل. كانوا اخوين مع داعش؟ كانوا اخوين مع داعش. وهلا؟ هلا استشهد بالمعركه كنا انا وياه واللي جابه كان سرتنا هو استشهد بالمعركه. ولا عمك هو شهيد ولا شو؟ شهيد. ليش؟ شهيد عم قاتل كفاره جابك. انت مختار الاستعمار. امم انت مخترع انه انت كان راح تستشهد يعني كان ازرع اني قلت لك يعني انه هذا دين يعني اليوم يعني كان يجينا محصول يمكن 1000 من الدول الغربيه من دول العالم كله يعني بشكل يوم يجوا من اي منطقه؟ من تونس والجزائر وليبيا ومن السعوديه والكويت ومصر والدول الغربيه عارف المانيا مشكل يعني كل الدول الاجنبيه كل فاصيل لحال يعني كل دوله تجي تعرف انت ما يختلطون بالشباب الثاني هم يغاتلوا كفرة وكفرة ونسمع هيك كفرة كفرة وندخل معهم عن المعركة مسيرة مسيرة الـ الـ الصفوف اللي كنا مخرطين فيها انه كله ضد الغرب ضد الغرب والدول الاوروبية يعني جهاز قمعي انه ما يظل احد لازم ينبسط الاسلام على وجه الكرة الارضية كاملة ضد المسيحي وضد اليهودي وضد اي يعني اي اي ان كان ضد الاسلام بالذات دول الغرب ودول الأوروبية كم مرتزك في هناك بالمصر؟ كثير كل واحد يقاتل بصف لحاله فما تقدر تسأل انه هذا من وين وهذا من وين بس في في يجي دكاترة في أطباء يجون يعني اختصاصيين في اقتحاميين في قناصيين لا الفرق كانوا معنا يقاتلوا معنا في جيش تركي كمان مخابرات كانوا يقاتلوا معنا شباب فرق بس انهم مخابرات من مخابرات كانوا قادات على مستوى قاتلوا شرس كنا ندخل معهم على المعارك So now let's go through what's been going on in the recent days as Turkey started their operation to destroy Rojava in October 2019, we've seen more and more proof of the relation between Turkey and ISIS. For example, just two days after the start of the Turkish operation, we suddenly got a car explosion in Kamishli, which is kind of rare since the area under YPG has been relatively safe. 
Media soon reported that several people died of the explosion and another bunch of people was under medical care in hospital. And the interesting thing here is that ISIS took responsibility of the bombings only a few hours later. So how did ISIS out of nowhere suddenly attack the Kurds exactly the same time as Turkey started their offensive? Is it just a coincidence? A few days later, Mustafa Bali, head of SDF press office tweeted this. The al Turkin prison hosting Daesh prisoners was shelled by Turkish armies. The place where the most dangerous jihadists are held in. Could this really be true? Mustafa Bali claimed that Turkish forces in their offensive were targeting Kurdish controlled prisons where thousands of ISIS captives were being held. In October 13, 2019, reports of as much as 785 persons affiliated with the Islamic State had managed to escape a camp where they were being held by the YPG after shellings from the Turkish army. This is claimed by several sources. Let's take a look at the two videos which spread from that time. Benjamin Hall, journalist at Fox News, tweeted this. US officials tell Fox News that Turkish artillery units are intentionally shelling Kurdish-run prisons in Syria, allowing ISIS fighters to escape. Any indication Kurdish forces have releasing them is Turkish propaganda. We should all remember that Erdogan controlled 95% of Turkish media and almost all media in Turkey that writes about this conflict is ruled under clear propaganda for Erdogan and AKP's sake. Take a look at these clips. We have taken the brunt of this terror as much as the YPG, which is equivalent to the PKK, which is a terrorist organization, as recognized by the United States and the European Union is attacking our civilians every day. We have taken the brunt of this terror as much as we can, and we have been uh, willing to work with our allies in trying to uh, eliminate this uh, very serious security threat on our border, but it has not worked. So at the end, we have had to take matters into our own hands under Article 51, which is our right of uh, national self-defense. The problem is, you know, you call them terrorists. Other people say you are releasing terrorists into that corridor because ISIS fighters are being released. You have facilitated terrorism in Where Syria for years and years because you have from. worked with these groups. But you have allowed all, them to go through your border lies. and bring this is weapons and lies. resources. You cannot say so, that. Well, they, no. No, you, you, there, no, there are as many listen. allegations no, against you, you as me. there are on the other side. No. Well, yeah, you also have to no. listen to my question. So what I'm saying the, is, no, if you're releasing you ISIS fighters that into that ISIS area, what are you achieving? That is a lie. We are the one country that has suffered more from ISIS terrorism than any other country. We are the one country that has actually cleared ISIS terrorism from North Syria more than any other country single-handedly in the coalition. We cleared 2,000 square kilometers of area in North Syria from ISIS. We have suffered more ISIS attacks than any other country in the in 
in the coalition. Yeah, now, it's very it both unfair ways. That's the truth. To, for you to actually parade this kind of lies that we're bringing in ISIS fighters. This is absolutely shameful. You cannot fight one terror group by arming another terror group. It was bound to hit a wall, this policy of the United States, which started in the previous administration. And right now, what's happening in America is our national security is becoming political fodder for the political situation there. As for the Europeans, for years, they've actually been just uh, been more sympathetic to this terrorist organization without looking at the... Erdogan also has many agents and journalists abroad who is doing everything they can to spread Turkish propaganda in the West world. Uh, ska vi se här. Orhan Karam, du är journalist på uh, den turkiska nyhetsbyrån AA. Uh, och jag vet att du har sagt att du vill inte debattera här ikväll, men du vill förklara hur du menar varför Erdogan gör det här, den här offensiven i Syrien. Jo, för att uh, han vill skapa en säkerhetszon för alla som boende syriska folket, irakiska och assyriska folket, turkmeniska folket för att skapa en, en säker plats för att de ska inte bli drabbats av kriget. Och Turkiet har kostat på hittills 40 miljard, miljard dollar och de vill bygga sjukhus, skolor och allt annat för att de ska bo ett bra sätt mm, och där de har bott och med sina kultur. Ja, samtidigt så ja, samtidigt. Du, vet, du ser ju hur internationellt så fördöms ju det här eh, på väldigt många, många håll. Du har också det studion här. Vad säger du då om reaktionerna? Jo, jag har lite för, svårt att förstå de reaktionerna för att eh, enligt min uppfattning eh, om världen borde samarbeta med Turkiet för att skapa ett bra läge och lösa problemet i platsen, i, nämligen i Syrien de, de har bott. Annars de kommer fly i resten av världen och då kommer bli problem om världen eller själva de som boende. Mm. Därför man måste lösa problemet i, i där problemet har börjat och idag jag hörde att USA och Turkiet har kommit överens och fem dagars vapenvila löst ut och det kommer bli en gott avslut önskar jag. Okay. When Kurdish forces came along with Syria and Russia, allying themselves against Syria, Islamic State widows from the Kurdish-ruled camp started to talk with Swedish press again. In a text, it was revealed that one of the widows said, Bashar al-Assad has come into Hasaka province where we are. He will make it before Erdogan, who still is 300 kilometers away. Out of everybody in this conflict, why would an ISIS widow suggest that there is any difference between Erdogan and Assad? Could it be the fact that they feel safe in the control of Erdogan? The same day an announcement from Swedish intelligence service said that the release of hundreds of ISIS soldiers will risk future terrorist attacks on European soil. Don't forget that every link is available in the description box below. That's it for this updated video. Let us know your opinion in the comment section below and link every sources and proofs that we've missed so that it can be even more clear to everybody what's going on and how dangerous Turkey is right now.